in this video we're going to have a look at the formal definition of what it means for the limit of a function to be either infinity or negative infinity. So I thought I'd start off with an example. So we have here a function whose limit as x approaches 0 is equal to positive infinity. So the function in question is the function 1 over x squared. And I've graphically represented this function here. So both the domain and the codomain of the function are the real line. So we've put the domain on the horizontal axis and the codomain on the vertical axis as usual. And then these lines here are representing the actual function plotted graphically. Now, of course, the function isn't defined as x is equal to 0. When you put in 0 here, you get 1 over 0 squared, which is undefined. Uh, however, for all the rest of the domain, all the rest of the real line, every other real number you can consider, this function is going to be defined. So we can instead then ask the question, what is the limit as x approaches 0 of the function? Does this exist? Does this have any intuitive, do we have any intuitive ideas about what this should be equal to? So this does not have a finite value answer. This function does not converge on some finite real number as x approaches 0. So we cannot use the epsilon delta definition for the limit of a function and apply it to this. By the epsilon delta definition, if that's your only definition for the limit of a function, then this doesn't have a limit. There is no finite value that it converges on as x gets closer and closer to a. And you can see that because as you get closer and closer to 0 in the domain, the value of this function is going to get indefinitely big from, in fact, either side. And the reason I chose the function 1 over x squared rather than 1 over x is because I want the function value to be positive as you approach from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, whereas if I picked 1 over x, of course, it would have been negative as we approach from the left-hand side. So I've done this deliberately so that it's going to plus infinity on both sides. So it is valid to say that this limit doesn't exist because by the epsilon delta definition there is no limit of this. However, just as with the case of sequences that tended to infinity or tended to negative infinity, where by the epsilon definition for the limit of a sequence they don't have a limit, we created a separate definition for what it means for a sequence to tend to positive infinity or negative infinity. We're now going to do the same here. We're going to create a separate definition for what it means for the limit of a function to be infinity or negative infinity. So I've written down here this separate definition for what it means for the limit as x approaches a of f of x to be positive infinity, and we'll write down in just a moment the slightly adaptive version for what it means for the limit to be negative infinity. But before we explain this, let's just think about intuitively what we want this to mean. We want it to mean that as you get closer and closer to a, the value of the function gets indefinitely big, but not just gets indefinitely big, we want it to get and stay indefinitely big. So how are we going to formally capture this? Well, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to say for all s greater than zero, so s is a positive real number, and we want it to be the case that the value of the function is going to be beyond that s for a certain closeness to the point a. And then if that's true for all positive real numbers, then it's true for really, really big ones. In fact, indefinitely big ones as well. So it would then capture the fact that the, if you get close enough to A, the value of the function will get beyond indefinite size positive real numbers. So for all positive real numbers, S, there must exist a delta interval, so a delta greater than zero, such that if you look at that delta interval around your point A that you're getting closer to, so if you look at the interval A minus delta to A plus delta, all of the points inside that interval bar, of course, the centerpiece itself where the function might not be defined or could be doing something totally different that doesn't affect what the limit of the function as x approaches A is. So the centerpiece is let off. We don't actually care what's happening at the centerpiece. That the value of the function for all of the things inside this interval is going to be greater than your value s. So illustrating the meaning of this with our example here, it is saying for all positive real numbers, however big you want, it is the case that you can find a delta interval, and the delta interval might need to be absolutely tiny. Indeed, if we made s enormous, maybe we made it 5 trillion, the delta might have to be absolutely tiny, but there will exist a delta. And in the case of our example, because a is zero, the delta interval will be negative delta to delta. There will exist this delta interval such that if you look at the points in that delta interval, bar the centerpiece, so bar zero in this case, all of them 
are mapped onto something that is beyond that s. So because I can do this for any positive real number s, no matter how big it is, it is capturing the fact that the value of the function must get indefinitely big as you get closer to your point a. And because the entire interval, I can find you an entire interval of points around your centerpiece a that is going to be mapped onto something beyond the s. It not only captures that it gets indefinitely big, but that it gets and stays indefinitely big as you get closer and closer to a. So it, hopefully I've convinced you, captures exactly what we are trying to capture. The definition for the limit as x approaches a of the function being negative infinity is then just the mirror image of this. So hopefully you should be able to make the modifications to this that are necessary yourself, but here it is. So now we want the value of the function to get and stay indefinitely big in the negative direction as you get closer and closer to a. So the way we're going to formally capture this is now for all s is a negative real number, there must exist a delta interval around our point a, so the interval a minus delta to a plus delta, where all the points inside that interval bar the centerpiece itself are going to be mapped onto something that is then beyond s in the negative direction. So f of x is now going to be less than s. So a brief example, and I haven't been particularly imaginative. So if we just take the mirror image of this function, so minus 1 over x squared, it's graphically going to look like the mirror image of this in the x-axis. So the limit as x approaches 0 of this intuitively should be negative infinity, and indeed it does satisfy this definition. We'll use this picture then to illustrate what this definition means. It's saying for any negative number, here is s now, there will exist a delta interval around our point a, and in this case our point a is 0 again, so we've got our interval negative delta to delta, such that if you look at all the points inside that interval bar, of course, the centerpiece itself, which is zero, they are going to be mapped onto something in the codomain that is actually beyond s now in the negative direction, so this negative tail end of the real line, and that means that f of x needs to be less than s, which is exactly what our definition is saying here. These definitions can be expanded for one-sided limits as well, and the motivation for this is consider the function 1 over x now, which graphically, of course, looks something like this. If we try and think about what the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is, well, it's not actually going to be infinity or negative infinity by these two new definitions that we've come up with. And, of course, the reason for that is, as you approach from the right-hand side, it's going off to plus infinity, so it gets and stays indefinitely big from the right-hand side, but from the negative side, it goes off to negative infinity, so it's getting and staying indefinitely small. So if you try and find a delta interval that's centred around 0 from negative delta to delta, where it's being mapped entirely onto something big or entirely onto something small, it's going to fail these definitions for all s's. So I've written out the modified version of this definition up here for the limit of the function being positive infinity, and I've written out the two separate definitions for what it means for the right-hand limit to be positive infinity and what it means for the left-hand limit to be positive infinity. So let's have a look at this one first. So the limit as x approaches a from the right-hand side, denoted with this plus here, of f of x equaling positive infinity. And of course, in the case of the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x, it approaches positive infinity if we change this to the right-hand limit. The formal meaning of this, or the formal way we capture this, is that for all s greater than zero, so for all positive real numbers, there must exist a delta interval, but now we only want to look at the right-hand part of the delta interval, the part of the interval that's to the right of our point a that we're approaching. So the interval from a to a plus delta, we've got rid of this bit from a minus delta to a, and of course, because this is the open interval, it doesn't contain the boundary point, so I no longer need to cumbersomely write out get rid of the centerpiece A because it's not included in there anyway. So all the points in this right part of the interval, this interval to the right of A, they are going to be mapped onto something greater than S, and you must be able to do this for all S. You must be able to find a delta interval such that this is true. So this is then capturing the fact that the value of the function gets indefinitely big as you approach A from the right-hand side and stays indefinitely big because it's not just one point in this interval that has got beyond that s, it's an entire interval. All of the points tailing into a from the right-hand side have got that big. So it's capturing the fact that from the right, as you come into a, 
the value of the function gets and stays indefinitely big if we are going to say that the right-hand limit of the function is positive infinity. Now let's have a look at the left-hand limit. So the limit as x approaches a from the left, denoted with the negative of f of x equaling positive infinity, the formal way of capturing this is here. So for all positive real numbers s, there must exist a delta interval where if you now just consider the left part of the delta interval, so the interval a minus delta to a, again, this is an open interval, so it's got rid of that centerpiece, all of those points are going to be mapped onto something that is beyond that s. So this is then capturing the fact that from the left, the value of the function gets and stays indefinitely big if we are going to call its left-hand limit positive infinity. Now, of course, if both the right and left-hand limit of the function is infinity, then that will mean that the overall limit of the function tends to infinity. Because for any s, this being true will mean that you can find this interval to the right of a that is mapped beyond that s, and this being true will mean that you can find an interval to the left of a that is being mapped beyond your s. And then from those two halves of the interval, you'll then be able to find an overall interval that is being mapped beyond the s, apart from the centerpiece a. To modify these definitions for negative infinity, all you need to do is change s from being a positive real number to being a negative real number, and you need to change that f of x is going to be less than s rather than greater than s. And that will then capture the fact that from whichever side you're coming, the function gets and stays indefinitely big in the negative direction. So with these definitions now, we can then write down for our function 1 over x that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side of 1 over x is equal to negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side is infinity. The final way I want to extend our discussion is what if we're not dealing with limit as x approaches some finite value a? What if instead we're dealing with limit as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity? So an example would be consider the function f of x is equal to x squared and think about what is the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared. Well, of course, the function gets and stays indefinitely big as you go off to infinity in the domain or indeed as you go off to negative infinity in the domain. So we want to try and formally capture this. So here's how we're going to formally capture this. So we'll begin with limit as x approaches infinity of f of x being positive infinity. The formal capturing of this is as follows. For all positive real numbers s, there must exist a positive real number k such that if you look at any point in the domain that is beyond that k, so greater than or equal to k, then f of x the value that that point is being mapped onto by the function is going to be beyond s. So on the picture, what this is saying is whatever positive real number you take, and it could be really, really big, so for indefinitely large positive real numbers, this is still going to hold true, there must exist a point in the domain, a k, such that that k and all the points beyond it when you look at what they're being mapped onto, it's going to be something beyond this s. So that is capturing that however big you want, I can find you a point in the domain such that that point and all the points beyond it are going to be beyond that big. So that is capturing the fact that this function gets indefinitely big, because it's true for all positive real numbers s, and the fact that it stays indefinitely big, because it's not just one point that's beyond there, it's that point and then the entire tail end of the real line in this positive direction. So it's catching the fact that as we get bigger and bigger and bigger, the value of this function is going to get and stay indefinitely large. And that's what we want it having a limit of positive infinity to mean or it tending to positive infinity to mean. Now the mirror image case. So what does it mean for the limit as x approaches negative infinity in the domain of f of x to be positive infinity? This is going to mean that as you get go out in the domain in the negative direction, so as you go more and more negative now, the value of the function must get and stay indefinitely big. That's intuitively what we want it to mean, so let's have a look at this. So for all positive real numbers, so for all indefinitely big positive real numbers, there must exist a point in the real line, and now we're looking at the negative points in the real line, so there must exist a k that is less than zero, so a k over here now, such that if you look at all the x that are less than or equal to k, so now we want this tail end of the real line in the negative direction, whereas here we wanted this tail end x greater than or equal to k. 
So for all x less than or equal to k, it must then be the case that f of x is greater than s. So this is saying, however big you take, take any s, positive s, there will exist a k in the negative real line such that that k and all of the points beyond it in this tail end, in the negative tail end of the real line, are mapped onto something beyond that s. So it is capturing the fact that as you go out this way, the value of the function gets and then stays, because it's the entire tail end, indefinitely big. And again, to change these definitions to negative infinity, all we need to change is, instead of getting and staying indefinitely big, we want getting and staying indefinitely big in the negative direction, so indefinitely negative. So we would want negative real numbers, so we'd want for all s less than zero here and here, and we now want our function to be less than s rather than greater than s. So the final thing that I would like to say before we end this video is that for each of these separate definitions that we have looked at here, the relevant form of the sequence characterization for the limit of a function is going to carry over and it's going to remain mathematically equivalent. So if we look at the first definition that we made, limit as x approaches a of f of x equaling plus infinity, the sequence characterization for this is going to be that if you have a domain sequence that converges to A where the terms of the sequence are not allowed to equal A itself, the corresponding image sequence will tend to plus infinity. So if this is true, it will imply that all such domain sequences have corresponding image sequences that tend to plus infinity, but the other way round holds true as well. If it is the case that all such domain sequences have corresponding image sequences that tend to plus infinity, then this definition will follow from that. And the proof of that is going to be exactly the same strategy as what we used in the video on the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function. For this definition, limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to negative infinity, the sequence characterization will be all domain sequences converging to a where the terms are not equal to a itself will have corresponding image sequences converging to negative infinity this time. For the one-sided limits, their corresponding sequence characterizations will be that if you consider the domain sequences that tend to A in the relevant direction, so for the right-hand limit it will be sequences tending to A from the right, for the left-hand limit it will be sequences tending to A from the left, their corresponding image sequences tend to either infinity if the limit is plus infinity or negative infinity if the limit is negative infinity. Finally, let's consider these two. So we'll start with this one. So this one's sequence characterization will be that sequences in the domain that tend to plus infinity, their corresponding image sequence will tend to plus infinity if the limit is plus infinity or negative infinity if the limit is negative infinity. For this one, it'll be sequences in the domain that tend to negative infinity, their corresponding image sequences will tend to plus infinity if the limit is plus infinity, or negative infinity if the limit is negative infinity. And with that, we'll end there. Thank you for watching.